uh, it's, it's when I got benched my fifth year, uh, Todd Haiti came in, whole new regime came in and benched me. Uh, for whatever reason, he was, he, he a different kind of cat. So he ain't. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. Yeah. But it happened. You know, it's one of those things where something wasn't supposed to happen, but it happened. Uh, uh, and, and the whole year I got benched. I only, only played back in the day, I only played um, my fifth year in the league. I played nickel. And when you play nickel back in the day, it's, it's, I mean, you're 20% of the time. Right now, nickel is your base defense. That's your base That's defense. Just, yeah. But, but at that time, I wasn't playing much. And, man, it, that taught me so much. That was like a, a year that kind of helped me to grow mentally, spiritually. Like, it really, you know, that, that's what we're talking about. You learn more from your losses than your wins. And I'll tell you what, man, after that season, um, they, they made this whole big deal. Oh, it's going to be an open competition now. You know, they all asked about, hey, why, why is DJ not on the field? You know, he got tired of that stuff. Man, I'll tell you what, man. Man, I in 2000, and I still remember to this day, 2010, training camp, man. I made sure I beat out that other player every single day in training camp. I'm talking about I woke up. And I, and I don't care if he had a great day, I beat him every single day. And that, and that wasn't watching him. That was worried about, worried about me, like making sure I, I handle my business. I tell you what, man, every time we watched film in training camp, I was kicking somebody's ass. I really was, man. I really yeah. was. And, and, and setting that foundation then, it, it let me know, because eight games during that year, I, they paid me, paid me a big deal, th- five, five years, 35 million, that quick. But that lets you know, at that, that point in time, I created a habit of consistency, mm-hmm. consistency and being easily motivated. And I tell you what, man, that led my career. Like from, I, I didn't make any Pro Bowls until after I got benched. That's, yeah. That just lets you know, like, uh, um, that sometimes the adversity is, is there to push you to another level. And, and that, that, and regardless of if, if I, uh, if it wasn't supposed to happen or, or happen, it happened and uh, I made the best out of it. Welcome to the Eat Cypher. Flow harder than the hands on Peter Piper. And now we would like to introduce you to your rivals. It's like Ali and Tyson. The hook is with the liking. So nothing, Mr. Bison. Maximus and Lee Unitas. You were in the booth with Titans. Goons, goblins, and Vikings. It ain't really nothing like us. Yo, welcome back to another episode of the Lit Code. The podcast where the menu is short and sweet, but it's plenty for your mind to eat. I'm Courtney Anderson. Boy, you, you got right. a freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm Edgar Edmundo Jones. No, I'm Edgar Jones, man. Edgar Jones. <laughs> we back again. Uh, we'll have an episode dropping for y'all soon. Uh, of course, y'all y'all will see it before y'all see this. But anyway, uh, we had a special guest on last week. We got another guest on today. I know y'all can see him at the bottom already, but Edgar's going to introduce him. Before he does that, we just want to thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for all the watches, the uh, listeners, the likes, the shares, the comments. Uh, again, without y'all, man, we'll just be two dudes talking in a, in a very country dialect back and forth to each other for an hour or two. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank y'all, man. I'm going to hand it off to Edgar so we can get it, get it kicked off. Yeah, appreciate you. Appreciate you with the handoff. Uh, yeah. As always, man, we thank y'all for the support. Uh, man, I got a, we got a special guest in the house today. Um, man, this dude been knowing each other for quite a bit, some time now. We don't talk all the time, and when we talk, it's never like no time has been missed at all. You know, uh, I consider my brother and family, uh, Mr. DJ Johnson. I call him, I go by DJ, but uh, I give you a little bit of background about him for the ones that may not know. I went to University of Texas was drafted by the Chiefs, uh, the number 15 pick in the first round, the 2005 draft. I uh, played 13 seasons with the Chiefs and won with the Raiders, made four Pro Bowls, 1,169 tackles, 27.5 sacks. They should've just gave you 28 sacks, DJ. Yeah. Uh, 23, we're gonna give you 28 sacks. <laughs> 23 forced fumbles, 14 interceptions, 14 touchdowns. Um, more importantly, man, outside of football, he's a, 
a, a great guy. Uh, integrity, his character, just always, you know, who he's been as far as how he's treated people. Uh, more importantly, too, he's a husband. He's a, um, a father of six. Uh, just <laughs> a solid guy. So, DJ, appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Man, I appreciate that introduction, my brother. Shoot, every time somebody remind me I got six kids, man, that's crazy. I don't never really, I don't never really say that number, but that's yeah, yeah, that's six. That's 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 not a typo. That's, yeah. that's for real. Yeah, it's yeah. six that you and 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 I know four of them you be working. I know you no. be working. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you be on Instagram, bro, having them running hills, and I didn't been around them, so I know. I know. <laughs> got to get them boys right, man. Shoot, five boys and one baby girl, so oh, really, I got four, four bigs and and two little. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I get it in. We get, get it in. DJ, let's matter of fact, that's a you know, I know we can we'll go briefly about you know telling people more about where you're from and mm -hmm. you know how you grew up with high school at. I mean, I saw you definitely had some crazy numbers in high school track and just the athlete all around. I, I personally think in my time of playing in the league um, that you are my top two best linebackers I've been around. And I, I get into why why I why I say that. And it ain't just something I, I thought I've seen. But we'll get into that later. But bro, with your boys, I've always, you know, seen how you work them and and push them. Why is that? You know, uh, man, I see a lot of myself in them, and uh, I, I've, I've been very fortunate over the years to uh, 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 go very far. I mean, on and off the field, and and I, I just, I mean, with them being my kids and being under my care, that's that's the that's that's the number one. That's my number one goal for them to find something they enjoy uh, mm -hmm. and then excel at it at the end of the day. But I, I gotta, I, it's a lot of work. A lot of leg work got to be done before you know they get out of my household. So uh, my biggest thing, I'm trying to influence them, man. Trying to trying to have a big influence on their life, um, and we do that through through, through working out, through working yeah. out. And, and you can uh, you can, uh, it's crazy. Um, 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 the the more you work out, the more you can tell about yourself. Meaning, like when you get tired or when you hurt, and can you push through pain? And there's a lot of examples that I always show my kids. Uh, now, obviously, this is workout stuff. It's not all about workout stuff. I kind of bleed it into academics and all that stuff, just because um, I, I gotta teach them that work ethic. Work ethic, because I know that if they're gonna be anything in life, discipline and and hard work got to be at the top of that list. And uh, it's hard sometimes because they're still learning. But uh, um, from what I know and what I've been fortunate to be around and see, man, I got I got to teach I got to teach my boys, man. Hey, hard work pays off. That old saying, and we and that's all. That's the only thing I teach. I teach to them, man. And uh, they they've been doing good. They've been taking it taking it on. Yeah, yeah. Um... You know, it is a little cliche because people be like, oh man, you know, uh, you hear people say it for so long, hard work pays off, hard work pays off. I mean, at the end of the day, that's the the foundation of anything you get into of your work ethic. And it does. I do agree with you with that working outside of it. And, and for, for it doesn't always look the same for each person, right? But it's finding whatever that is for you, just like you said with your boys, right? Of something that you get into that, you got to find out more about yourself that it's difficult, it's challenging, <laughs> and especially when you get to the point of reevaluating your life when you're working out. Yeah. Like it's like that that much more of what you're gonna find out with you pushing yourself and then making that decision. Because regardless on what decision you're making, like you're teaching yourself something. So I'm teaching myself that either I'm gonna quit or I'm teaching myself that I'm gonna push through and continue to do that, man. So it ain't yeah. easy, bro. But you know, at the end of the day, we always speak about fathers being in their kids' life. Yeah. And being not just being in their life, but being a positive impact in their life. Big time. As much as you can, dude. And at times that can be challenging. It's not a it's not an easy um job as a parent these days. Um and, and as a father, at times that can be challenging. But you know, if we don't teach them, somebody gonna teach them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? that, that, so uh, that's true. That's true. That's yeah. true. Especially today as a as a as a black father in our in our communities, we need that more than anything, man. And, uh, here's what you're doing. Edgar said the word that was on my mind, which is foundation. You're setting the foundation for him. So 
because we all know, just like we did, my dad set a certain foundation for Elgin and myself, but then when we got out of his reach, we had to try some things on our own. But the foundation was there. So mm -hmm. like building a house, if you build it on a shaking foundation, you keep stacking stuff on it sooner or later, it's gonna oh. sink or settle. But yeah, it's built on something sturdy, even if you mess up along the way. Foundation there, frame solid. We can Man. we can put more stuff on that, but so you doing the you doing the right thing. And kudos to you on that, man. Yes, uh, good job on it. especially with how many you say five boys, six man, six, five boys, bro. one girl. Yeah, oh, five girl. baby girl. She ain't gonna <laughs> <laughs> I love it though. I love it, man. I can't wait till she get old. I'm gonna I'm gonna call up. They gonna be grown, and I'm gonna call I'm gonna call up the boys. Hey man, y'all come to the house. She about to yeah. go to the prom. <laughs> like, hey, like hey, on bad she bring boys. that date over. Yeah, <laughs> come on over real quick. <laughs> Yes, sir. <clears throat> so, hey, Elton, uh, go ahead, Corey. I, I know you talk about uh, sometimes you'll tell me, uh, you know, Nova try to keep up with, with DJ Boy with the, and you called him, uh, <laughs> you told me he's, he's he had two of them for sure that was likings. So, uh, <laughs> you ever told DJ what I, what I were liking all about? No, nah, you could tell him. You oh, okay. tell him. You go. Ahead. <laughs> so basically, Egg and I like to call each other likings. I know you've seen the movie Underworld before. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and the liking is basically a werewolf, but it's not like one that had to be bit by another werewolf. So he can just turn his on and off when he wants to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He can. <laughs> so that's the same oh. thing with the boys, man. That's what that's what I'm training my son to be. I know Elga doing the same. And you probably doing the same because you got to. You know, you gotta be able to turn it on and off. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you do, you do. Yeah. That, that, that dog, that, that dog gotta be in you. And, and you know, it's okay at sometimes to be that wolf, to be mm -hmm. that dog. And then at other times, it's like, all right, we gotta, yeah. we gotta, we gotta turn yeah. that off. Yeah, you, you gotta know? turn it off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's ain't the time and place, man. It's ain't the time and place, man. DJ, man, for the people that don't know as well, dude, where you from, man? Where you tell people? Uh, yeah, tell yeah I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm from Central Texas, man. I'm from Waco, little, little town. Uh, right in the right in the heart of Texas, man. Uh, shoot, they call it Baylor, Bear Country, Baylor Country, or whatever. But I grew up a, a Baylor fan, Dallas Cowboy fan, all that. Um, yeah, uh, being being from Texas, but yeah, from a little town called Waco, man. So growing up in in, in Waco, because I always got to pass through Waco when we driving down to Austin. Uh, but but growing up in Waco, being a, a Baylor fan. Was that something that you envisioned in your head of of of, of one day playing with Baylor? Um, it, it, yeah, early, early on, because my brother played at Baylor. He was five, six years older than me, so uh, I grew up in a house where where I had somebody that I wanted to emulate, and and he had, he set a great example for me. So he was playing football, defensive line, defensive end. He went got a scholarship to Baylor, went to the league for about five or six years. So I had somebody in the household that I was like, man, this is how you do it. So yeah. uh, I always give credit to my older brother because, you know, that's, you know, that he, he knew I was looking up to him, looking up to him. And he was kind of blazing the trail for me. Uh, and I came at them. I kind of blew, blew up the trail, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I didn't, you know, obviously I didn't go to Baylor. Um, um, they, at that time, they was they was yeah they were they weren't doing too well. But I grew up a fan of football. That's the main thing that I'm thinking of watching the Dallas Cowboys. What well, you know? I mean, I mean, if the Dallas Cowboys would freaking lose, I would be almost crying because that's yeah. that's how embedded I was of being you know watching football and being that uh being that being that fan and playing football, man. And uh, it's uh it's taken me a long way. I've learned a lot from football. Football has given me a lot and I've given football a lot, so. Yeah, yeah. So having that big brother like that and seeing him, you know, what he was able to do from going to college and then going to league playing, and then obviously y'all growing up in the same household, did that play a big part on your work ethic? Cause that was, you know, we talk about you working your boys like that, right? And work at the work ethic and heck, anytime I've been around you, we would be sitting there like, hey, you want to do a workout? Be like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, like, know, what, right? what we going to do? I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I remember when I came to your house, I was like, hey, you want to go running? And we ran, we took off, oh. ran three, you know what I'm saying? Like, yep. and even when we played with each other, like always that extra, that extra, right? I got to give more to it. So I'm, 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 I'm asking that question. Did that, did that play a part with having your brother in the house like that, with that work ethic? <laughs> 
I, absolutely, man. Absolutely. You talk about uh, uh, that. That's where I get it from. I mean, I, I got, I'm glad you reminded me of that because when I was little, my brother, he wanted to see me succeed. He knew I had potential, obviously, but he was doing his deal. But he always like, you know, he'll grab me and take me up to Baylor and, I, and I'll be around these players. So this wasn't, a, I wasn't a stranger to hard work. I wasn't a stranger to seeing a, a college football player. So I'm like, this is just what it is. So my expectations, I was like, man, this is what you do. You, you, you know, you get a, you do good in football, you work hard, you know, make good grades. And then you get a scholarship like this stuff was, you know, even though it wasn't really normal, you know, for everybody else, for me, it was like, this is, this is what you do. And, uh, uh Man, I tell you what, um, it just just him setting that great example, uh, kind of really, kind of really set the tone for me early. And man, hard work is just that's just what you do. I mean, you just wait. I mean, that's the only way you do it, right? That's yeah. that's. I mean, if you if you want anything in life, anything worth working for, uh, is worth having. So I mean, I'm, I'm I'm blessed to have have a big brother that uh, just paid away for me, man, big time. And, and oh yeah, and let me add this: seeing him, because um, I took a different route. Meaning, I was first round pick. You know, I was yeah. I was you know great all American coming out of high school. Like I was, I had the marks. And he wasn't quite that. Of course, he was you know playing the league for four or five years, so you know he was you know a talented player. But uh, to see him uh, uh, go to Baylor, lose all those games because uh, um, they wasn't good at that time. Um, being a rookie free agent, you know, going going that route and, and still working his butt off and doing that, I seen all that. So I'm like that. I I like stories like that. Like when when players, that's what kept me going when I played in the league, and those players come in, those rookie free agents, and I'm like, man, and you still working hard like that? You handling up for for a first round pick? I'm like, you ain't got you ain't got no excuse. You got to go. Like that, <laughs> that, that, that that's just that's just motivation for me, and that's just how I looked at things and. And those stories are all around, and you know it. It's just, it's. I mean, you see Ricky Friedis and people that you say, man, that guy just kind of came from a small school and just did this, and he now he he right next to me, like we're in the meeting room, we starting together. Uh, so uh, for me to to have an excuse to not work or to be tired, and 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 the background that I have, meaning not that I've been handed everything i just you know i've been fortunate to have a lot of accolades and all this stuff but it's like man looking at these being around these guys they they kind of motivated me to to uh to, to work even harder so yeah you, man you just said a mouthful boy when you <laughs> yeah yeah you're yeah. you talking about that cat up there at the, at the top left he wanted he wanted the guys right uh <laughs> but you said something you said something important man you said that your brother made that normal for you, right? So for a lot of cats, NFL a long shot or college ball a long shot, you got yeah. them in the house, which is normal, which takes me back to us raising our kids. Eric and I talk about it all the time. It's like we're trying to cut that time in half. So, you know, just have nothing to do with the, with the league. It could be, I can make being financially literate normal in my house. I can make having integrity normal in the house. Yeah. You get that at, at, at five, six years old versus I might not have got it till I was 30. My son, by the time he's 30, he's going to be light years ahead of where I was because right. I gave it to him early, made it normal for him. It's all about what you make normal. Cats that come from certain environments you're in the hood, people look at them like, man, they crazy, they wilding out. <laughs> now, really, they just doing what they think normal. They just living what's normal to them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we come from a time where ain't nothing but work. So hard work. Me and Edgar was normal to us, you know what I'm saying, coming up. Uh, I like to tell him his gift, Edgar's gift wasn't football, it was hard work. He just, <laughs> he really just outworked everybody. We, you know, we be going out at night sometimes, 10, 11 o'clock, we going to the local parties. Edgar be at the field house with a, <laughs> with a parachute, weighted vest. Man, I shoes, love that. That's what's know? <laughs> <laughs> and he And he running and all of us, we looking at him like he crazy. He had already figured it out though. You see what I'm saying? That, all right, this is what's gonna take me to, to where I need to be. Uh, I'm gonna take you back just a little bit further than your brother, cause y'all y'all got into it. Y'all stole one of my one of my questions cause I was gonna ask you what the name Dwight meant to you. Uh, but I'll take it back to a, to a bigger name, which would be Miss Beverly. 
And I'm a nerd. <laughs> I research hard. So <laughs> I know that yeah. football almost didn't happen for you. Your, your, your first time out. Uh, Elga's brother's there with him right now. He just had his pro day the other day. Exact same thing happened to him. I was his, me <laughs> and my dad was his first coach. So when he called, he told us, he said, Uncle Bo, I want to play football. I called Elga. I said, Elga, uh, JW said he want to play football. He said, well, you know what to do. You know what that means. If you're going to play, you're going to play. In our family, that means something. That means you got to pretty much tame our daddy and our daddy. He, he uh, about 64 right now. He still ain't one you just go poke it <laughs> at all. <laughs> so <laughs> JW had a rough. That first day he quit. And the next day he was on the back of the truck. I mean, uh, Elga's mama, you don't poke her either. So when he told it on us, <laughs> She had some choice <laughs> words for us. <laughs> but yeah. the next day he was on the back of that truck. So tell us about that, man. Tell, tell us about the impact your mother had and tell us about that little story where you almost, we almost didn't have DJ Esther. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> man, I tell you what, man. Uh, yeah, we I've been talking about my brother, man. But all, all that hard work, that came from something. So uh, being in a single parent household, uh, daddy was in town. Uh, so didn't have a, you know, a dead beef or nothing, but mm -hmm. um, mom did most of the work, put it like that. Um, um, but I tell you what, man, uh, my mom, strong lady, man, strong lady. I, shoot, I'm still scared of my mom, man. It's just, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things where uh, um, um, she she instilled a lot of great values in us at a young age. Uh, um, school Being a school teacher, obviously, she, you know, uh, that, that's just how she was wired. You know, she, she, she didn't just was a school teacher, at, you know, at school, she came home with that. So <laughs> we, we got all at it. She she was she was one of them teachers where you say, man, you and Miss Johnson, Clark? Man, oh man, <laughs> Miss Johnson, golly. And she was in the inner city. She all the project kids, everybody. So I mean, it was it was one of those things where she had a uh, everybody had a lot of respect for Miss Johnson at the end of the day. Cause you ask people later on in life, they like, man, man, your mama the only person that made me do my work. You know, she was the only person that could get me going. Uh, which means a lot. Uh, she instilled a lot of great values in those uh, in our kids too. But uh, uh, being a uh, being a football mom, she she knew I had something uh, in store, uh, some some great potential. But uh, I think I was nine or ten, man, uh, just starting football, and we had. I mean, we was in the hood, so it, I mean, the coach he was. I mean, he was he was. He, I, I wasn't used to a man just kind of cussing us out and just kind of like, you know, you know, being so hard on us. I'm like, man, and I just, I, I did it for a couple of days. And after that, I was like, man, I'm good. I don't, you know, this, this ain't, this ain't it. I don't want to play. Like, you know, I told my mama that, like she was about to drop me off at practice, man, I'm crying. She trying to pull me out the car. Like, I'm really like, nah, I'm good. Like, I don't like, like, we don't, we don't have to go this route. Uh, but she she made me man. She knew something was great in me, and uh, she she's always big about uh, you know boys got to be boys. That's just what it is, you know. And uh, she 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 made that known. Of course, she said some choice words at the time to you know to to get my mind right, you know, uh, uh, not being you know acting like a boy, not a girl or whatnot. And I mean, uh, uh, I, it stuck for a little while, and then. After that, after I got used to it and they saw the potential in me, uh, uh, my, my mind and my uh, just my demeanor got a little bit harder uh, just because of that environment I was in with that with that coach and just the environment I was in with the uh, with all the other kiddos. But man, I tell you what, man, uh, I thank thank my mom to this day every time she she'll bring it up here and there. Man, you remember you remember you? you know, I had to pull you out of the car. You was crying and. You know, and and really, some people, some people, mom, they'll be like, "Well, no, you know what? He crying. Let's not, let's not do it. You know, or let me go fuss at this coach for being so mean and all this stuff." But my mom was like, "No, nah, I know the coach. He good people. You you, you you need to get out this car. Get out this van. We had a little minivan. So I got out, man, and uh, uh shoot, I, I did did well for myself after that." Yes, sir. Sometimes when it when it's rough. You need to run dead into it. That's the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the best thing for you to do. Uh, for real. One more point I'm gonna give to Eric because I talk all day, but 
Uh, <laughs> you you said you wasn't used to that coming up in the, in a single parent home. You wasn't used to that man being rough with you like that. Uh, Egg and I, we were on another podcast, a butt of our, we were on his podcast the other day, and he asked us, do we think black men hold each other accountable? <clears throat> and I said, uh, well, do, are we, are most black men accustomed to being held accountable by another male? It's another big, that's why I always give kudos to, to present black fathers all the time. Your sons, my son, mm -hmm. Edgar's son, as he gets older, he won't have no problem with a man holding him accountable when he out of line and when he needs to pick it up a little bit. That's yep. something that's, that, that gets missed when that, when that male figure, that stern father, your mother said, boys gonna be boys. I feel like there's a attack on masculinity these days. That's a whole nother episode, but <laughs> uh, having that leads to other things. So, uh, you thought that coach was saying something and then you probably got to UT and you figured out, oh, that wasn't nothing compared to how these Not coaches there. talking to you. See Not what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen, man, I didn't hear some stuff, boy. Yeah. So, so kudos to you again, man. I just, I just wanted to throw that in there because you said it and I it hit my ears. Uh, Eric, I'm handing, handing it back off to you. Sorry. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate it. Hey, DJ, um, I guess a, a question for you, man, because like you said, you had your brother in the house. Um, he was very, um, a high, um, productive athlete, went to, went to college and played in the league was, and then, so do you feel like that was a pressure on you as a kid? Did you ever think about that? Like through high school and, 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 and like a pressure on you to, to hit that level or, or, or perform better than him? You know what? That's a good question, man. Um, uh, no, uh, be, be, because my mindset was different and I love the, this is my mindset of growing up. Um, I never looked too far ahead. I wasn't yeah. that kid that you say, man, he in junior high is playing kids. I see him now, man, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the top, you know, receiver in the, in the, in the league. I'm going to do this and do that. Yeah. That wasn't me. I was like, I'm about to handle it up right now. I'm in seventh grade. I'm on an A team right now. I'm about to be the best, per, best football player I can be. And I've always had that through everything. I mean, through, through high school, I always had people to have to tell me, hey man, you got you got a chance to go big. You got a chance. I'm kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm I'm trying to, you know, have this humble mindset because yeah. that's how I grew up. But I, I've always put more energy into where I was at. And and I've always told kids that because that sometimes you can, it's don't get me wrong, you gotta have goals. That's you know, you, you gotta know where you're going. But for the priority wise, like like right now, the little mini victories, you gotta handle like where you at right now before that even gets there, before that even's possible. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. a lot of kids look too far ahead and they're like, they're talking about the league. I'm like, you you're not even you didn't even work out this week. You <laughs> what you doing? What are you talking about? You gotta be the best. You gotta. You're not even the best yeah. person on your team right now. So you gotta. There, there's just there's just a lot of a lot of uh, 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 little mini victories you have to capture on the, the process is the, is the dream, right? That the process of making it to the league, that's the part where you say, man, this is, this is what makes you, that's what builds your character, this is what builds everything about you. And at the end of the day, man, uh, um, I've had that mindset throughout my years of not having that pressure because now you get, you do have pressure, but I'm saying, I had more pressure when I got to the league. Like that's, I mean, we could talk about that too. That's that's pressure. That's real pressure. Yeah. But to get there and just to, uh, you know, high school and then college, and of course, I was I was fortunate enough to win awards and be on the, you know, be on the high end of a lot of things. But uh, I really kind of um, put more energy into where I was at, and that really uh, that really helped me out, bro. That really yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, man. You know, it was, it was actually interesting. Me and Courtney talk a lot about this is there's nothing wrong with goals and being able to think about down the down the road, but I think it's extremely important to be also present in that moment time moment mm -hmm. in time and just taking advantage of whatever opportunity that's in front of me. Uh whatever's given to me at this moment in time, whatever I have and what what am I doing, just being the best version of myself in that moment and finding those little victories. And also being able to to learn from the failures, the failures as well. You know, 
the times I didn't do, like I, I thought I was gonna do, learn from that. Man, that, it's, that it's, get, that's chills right there. That's, that's I was talking to my boys about the other day. That's, that's I, I tell my boys something, not to cut you off, I tell my boys sometimes, like, go mess up, go freaking, go fail. Go do, yeah. like, don't be out there like you playing basketball and you just like trying not to mess up. Go, go mess up, I wanna see some. Yeah. Like that's the only way you get better. Yeah, because that's that's and that's where you you think about it from film study when we watching, you know, a game or breaking something down. I think about the most <laughs> lessons I've learned when we got our butt whooped. <laughs> you know, rather <laughs> like it ain't the the great coaches, the great coaches, the greats, the elites that I've been around. They're still trying to make you learn even in success. Because I think those two things you can look at the same way. I can look at success and look at what I can learn in the middle of that and how I continue to improve. And I think also to appreciating what you've done when you've been successful, also being humble with that. And then also when I fail, saying to myself, all right, what have I learned? More importantly about myself, you know, yeah. the self-awareness of what am I doing? How can I continue to get better? And what can I control? And then uh, not making this mistake again, you know, not making this mistake again. So football, football, football taught you that right there. Cause this, I mean, you've had it. I mean, I'm sure you've had games where you like, man, I, I had a great game. And you still watch film like, man, I can do this better. I can do that better. It's yeah. so, it's so, you know, it's so much to get better. But that's why I love football because it's never perfect. It's always room for growth. It's always you, room. Yeah. You, 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 you've been great performing wise. The team's been great performing wise. And y'all still got whooped. <laughs> <laughs> like, for real. Like, and, and, you know, the crazy thing about it is that the scoreboard only tells you so much about what happened in the game. You know, the scoreboard is like looking outside the house. You didn't get a chance to go in and see really what took place. Mm. Um, and and it could tell you, all right, well, they lost the game, but like, what did the effort look like? What did the what did what did the individuals do? What the, the, the each player did? Like, how much energy did they contribute to the game? You know, that's a that's a whole nother game. <laughs> yeah, because that's that's touchy though. That's touchy because it's not it's. It's because a lot of time we, we just we, we want the result at the end of the day. Just bring me the win. Just bring just bring me something. But it's it's about the process. Like that's that's the journey. Like that's the dream. That's the that's the part where you get better. You don't get better because it's a W up there. You know, like I mean, I don't know. Some everybody's different, but the way I think about it, I, I kind of because we're not gonna always win or whatever. Yeah. You're gonna lose, but that process, you know, that middle part. That middle mm -hmm. part that we're talking about, that's 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 probably the most important at the end of the day. Yeah. Getting prepared all week, right? Winning every yep. play. Yeah. Because yep. I, I like to tell people that the future don't exist. Because it don't. Cause you say mm -hmm. that all we all we do have is right now. That's yep. what we got. And then since we get to we get to try to uh uh focus on something and manifest it later. Then it makes no sense to uh, have a negative outlook on anything because it really don't exist. You know what I'm saying? You can say you can. That's say, a good way to think about it, though. <laughs> yeah, it don't. Yeah. I mean, why say uh, if I tell myself I want to save, I want to save an extra hundred k this year? Uh, mm -hmm. Why tell myself I ain't gonna get it? Because <laughs> like the part, like right now, every time I get paid when I'm putting it up, that's what it actually exists. That day right there. <laughs> the future down the line don't exist. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It don't. So, yeah. so why would I tell myself something negative? You gotta keep a positive outlook on it and then keep working towards whatever goal I set. But like you said, what you're doing right now, what you're doing with it right here in this moment, uh, you know what I'm saying? You, your your career as it as it panned out the numbers, every name, you know, before uh like that wasn't, it didn't exist while you was playing. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You made it happen, right. game in, game no, out. True. And then now it exists, because it's part of it's part of history now, it's itch. But at first, in year three, that ain't exist. You know what I'm saying? It ain't exist mm -hmm. yet. You, you had all. to daily work it out and make it happen. So uh, it's just a good a good point uh, that you gotta, you gotta focus on your right now, man. Uh, hey, it's, uh, just, it's a great point. DJ, let's talk about man. You going to Texas? What made you choose going to Texas? And throughout your your time being there, because now we talking about you know them Longhorns. There's <laughs> a lot of great athletes there. You yeah. know, not that you didn't play against some great athletes in high school, but now you get to University of Texas. Let's talk about why you chose Texas, 
and then uh, just what you learn. Yeah, and that's a. I'm pretty sure you learned a lot. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, man. Uh, t- I, man, I, I enjoy Texas, man. I enjoy. Um, um, I kind of became a Texas Longhorn fan d- during that high school. D- while I was watching Baylor, seeing Texas, Ricky Williams, all those guys yeah. come down and play, play yeah. Baylor or whatnot. Um, but um, I just, I was a Texas leaner. For some reason, Texas gravitated to me. Uh, I never wanted to go too far away from home. I was the youngest in the family. That, that mama's boy, that, that, that's who I was. Um, and um, I knew I wasn't going far. You know, you had the A&Ms, you had the OU, Texas. Uh, that, was, that was probably my, my top three if I were to go to uh, whatever, commit to. And uh, Mac Brown, at the end of the day, he, he, everybody talk about how good of a recruiter he is, man. He was, you talk about somebody that can talk. He got a mouthpiece on him, man. He, I mean, he had my mama, he had my mama coming back to me talking about, man, they gonna, they gonna, they gonna give away a lot of scholarship. They gonna give away some scholarship. They only got a limited amount. You gotta, you gotta jump on it there. I'm like, mama, <laughs> if they go, if they want me, They'll, they'll let me do my little process or whatever, yeah. you know, until I, till I get to that point. But uh, that just lets you know, uh, uh, they really uh, were on me. They loved me. Um, and, and I knew Texas has a rich tradition. I mean, you think of, mm-hmm. you know, Longhorns, it's just in Texas, that's just mm-hmm. what it is. And um, they were coming up at that time. They wasn't, you know, as good as they were when I was there, but they, they, they were getting to that point. Yeah. And uh, uh, man, we, man, I, I, I couldn't have made a better decision honestly could have made a better decision uh, being in austin big city yeah uh, got sixth street got the light night life and at the same time you got a big university that that holds weight when you get your degree from there so yeah i was man i i i, I you know i was a. Uh, now i think about it i didn't know what i was really getting into i i i, I, I love that i was simple as a kid you know you that that kid where you say man you know, he's a great All-American. He's coming in here. He's got pressure. He's got this. And I'm just kind of like, like, I'm, I'm about to, when I get out on the field, I'm just going to play. And everybody, yeah. used to, every time I got out there, they like, man, who is this? You know, I was, wasn't skinny, but I was slim little, you know, kid, 210 pounds, uh, uh, 6'3", running sideline to sideline, looking like a receiver out there. And, uh, uh, man, they was, they was just, they were really surprised. And sometimes I'm kind of like, um, I was surprised that they were, they were really like, man, like you're good. You know, they, that's when I really got the talks like, man, you, you got a chance to go to the league and all this stuff. And I'm like, all right, man, I'm, you know, I'm, like, I still, I mean, I'm a freshman. I'm 18, 19 years old, man. Let me, let me, let me handle up. I didn't. And the best thing I like about Texas, man, they didn't lie to me. You know, a lot of these uh, schools, they'll tell you, promise you stuff, man, man you're going to be starting. You're going to be this. It was like, Hey, we got three, uh, three seniors and linebacker. So, after they leave, it'd be your, you know, it'd be your spot or whatever. So you may redshirt, you may not, we'll see. I didn't yeah. even think I was going to play. Like I, I was naive at that time. Um, I didn't know my ability, how much, you know, um, talent I had. And honestly, when I got there, man, I, I, I broke into that spot. I made them change to a three, four defense to make me, <laughs> make me one of the linebackers. They had to. And I, st- I started maybe two or three games because we did the three, four system, but I, I mainly switched in and out. And I was, I was a leading tackler my freshman year, bro. And I, I only started two games. So it, it, that tells you that um, um, the impact I had when I got in the game, because I only played 40, 50% of the time using it, so. Yeah, yeah. man, kind of going back a little bit too, I mean, it, it goes back to what we just really been talking about, like your focus, right? <laughs> like, you know, you said you, you, you're thankful that you was just a simple, kid because when you went to Texas you didn't even really have an understanding of what you was walking into and then yep. even when you got on the field people been like oh man you been and, but like you're so focused on the present and what you got to do and just <clears> being the best version of yourself at that moment in time it's kind of like going in the stadium and playing in front of 80,000 people people <laughs> yeah. be like man do you hear all them people screaming I'm like bro I'll be so focused <laughs> I don't <laughs> like I'll be I mean maybe at the beginning I may hear that but like when it's time to like zone in and focus in what I need to focus on, you know, like all that just goes away. It just, it just goes away. Cause it's time for me to focus and people can call it a little bit of being, you know, maybe naive and not paying attention. I just call it a being aware, man. Yeah. Just very yeah. aware of like what's, what the situation is and what's going on around you, which I think is one of the, the key 
components of an athlete continue to be the best version of themselves on the field. A person. Mm -hmm. A person or a person. In life. In yeah. life. Or what yeah. Yeah. Awareness. Yeah. Awareness. You can run, you can <laughs> play sideline to sideline, bro, but if you don't have no awareness where that guard at, mm. you don't let Man. Like, yeah. <laughs> spinning your will. For real. Spinning your will. So hey, for, for both of y'all though, don't I mean, DJ, when when you went to uh you went to UT in what year? Oh one. Oh one, yep. Oh one. Uh for the guys coming up now. I think that that focus and being able to stay in that bubble like you did, Edgar, like you were able to, I think that's way harder now because the access they have, like they, I mean, highlights on YouTube, social media, all these people, like you just had people coming to tell you you good uh, <laughs> when nobody posted. You couldn't, when nobody posting your highlights, speaking of highlights, I'm, I'm backtracking again. It's this 33, 31 tackle game. That's, that's a, that's a real, yeah, that, that's that's a real deal, man. That's real, man. I had 30, so, 31 tackles in one game, yeah. That, that right there. If you had 31 tackles in the game today, <laughs> it would go viral. So all that, that's true. All that that's I don't true. know, I ain't know I was that good, that'll, that'll kind of be out the window today because yeah. everybody be knocking at your door, putting it in your lap. You'll probably have NBA and NFL players sharing it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Man, it can, no, that's true. That can I don't really, think of that like that. That's true. Yeah, yeah. But today is it's it's hard with this access, which makes your presence again as a father even that much more vital because our kids got way more access to stuff than we ever had just by picking up these little things or getting on their tablets or computers and they can access everything. And they're gonna be DJ sons coming up. <laughs> so everybody, yeah. you know, so it's 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 a it's a bigger challenge now to to uh, keep that in, but you you mentioned how you hit the ground running the, uh you didn't even start, but 83, 83 tackles just yes, uh, freshman <laughs> yeah. year, seventeen yeah. tackles for a loss, four and a half. Yeah. Six. I told you I'm a I nerd. See you with the stats, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's to be a freshman at UT. That's that's big. So so my question is, when did you know? Like when when did you um, understand that that like I I I'm the man and I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm you, you know what that's a good question yeah you know what it it, it kind of hit me that I was a little bit better than everybody else man when uh, probably my uh, maybe my second year at, at UT like after I had that freshman year I'm like golly like these guys been playing for four and five years and I come out here dude from you know Waco and just blew it up and I just. I started getting on the watch list for Buckets Award and Nagurski and all that stuff like early, like my mm -hmm. sophomore year. And uh, uh, that 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 was the time where I was like, all right, like, you know, I, I got a chance. And mm -hmm. I still, uh, I still was, uh, I still approached it the same way, man. I got to get better. I got to, now I got to win in the Gersky. I got to win the Buckets Award. Mm -hmm. I got to be a finalist. And, um, and I kind of, kind of, that's how it's shaped up, man. And I just, I always kept that mindset. Always throughout, you know, throughout my college career. Had a great college career, man. Won the Nagurski, won the, won the Buckets Award. I was up for Lombardi's. I was up for a lot of awards and whatnot. But, uh, man, I've been, I've been blessed, bro. For real. Yeah, you, you, uh, I asked that question because with the work ethic I already set, the mindset I already set, and then you sprinkled in a little confidence, mm. and then boom. Confidence you, everything. Yeah, once you once you confident in, especially especially when you are to put the work in. It's like yeah. it's like taking the test. It's, I mean, if I if 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 I knew which which I was a nerd, so I couldn't study all week. If I studied all week, then my brain was gonna go elsewhere. I needed to be under <laughs> pressure. And so like day before or whatever, but I'm walking <laughs> in. I know I'm, I, I got natural ability. I'm, I, I was a naturally smart fella, used natural athletic. I got mm -hmm. the ability. Then I put my work in, whatever my work meant to me, which was that mm -hmm. day before. So when I come in, I see this test paper and I look at that first, that first page and I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know all these. That yeah. confidence with my work I put in, oh man, you, but, <laughs> you, you in for it. <laughs> that, that, and that, that's true. That's what I tell my, my kids now, man, like, 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 Cause sometimes when they get in certain games, football, basketball, whatever it is, they're like, they're like kind of nervous or they're, they're kind of shook. And I'm like, well, the, the more you work, that's where your confidence comes from. Cause it's like, 
I didn't done this before. Let's go. Like, you know what I mean? You didn't build up that muscle memory. But, yeah, your, 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 your confidence is everything, man. Especially, you know, when you fail or something happened wrong, like, can you still get back up? That, that's what I love about football, too. It Like, I, it, there's plenty of times where, you know, something happened, somebody beat me or somebody ran me over or something. Can you still get up and say, I'm good? Like, honestly, for football players, we're a little, that's a little crazy. Just because, you know, for somebody <laughs> to just kill your soul, you know what I'm talking about, Eric, just kill yeah. your soul, boom, and then you get up like, I'm going to get you next time. It's, it's, yeah. it's, that's just, that's not normal. So, well, that's, yeah. that's, that's because you figured out me versus me. Because mm. that's, all, that's all it is. That dude running you over, stepping in your chest, whatever he did, he really ain't got nothing to do with the battle. It's really, <laughs> like you said, am I going to get up and tell that other, that other me the same, man? Man, dude, just put his foot in our chest. Yeah. What we doing out here? Can, yeah. can you tell him, hey, man, shut up and get back in the hood? <laughs> and we going right at him again next time. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Look, yeah. and, while you, and while you getting up, after, check this out now. While, while you getting up after you just got ran over, got beat, life is still going, bro. Still the going. game, the, the, the ref is doing his, his, his right arm in a circle like this. The <laughs> clock is still going. They getting plays, right? Yeah. You getting the play. You gotta think about your assignment, your alignment, your technique. Yep. Yep. You gotta make a call. And guess what? It's three, two, one, snap the ball again. <laughs> and, for, yep. and for both of you guys, y'all professional athletes, but think about how many times that's happened off the field since y'all ain't been playing no more. Or in life in general. Like you just got this phone call and it's it's like it's bad news. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now. Life's still happening. Whatever that bad news is, it's still formulating. Are you gonna sit in it, sit in it and cry and you know, man, that's <laughs> huge. Or are you gonna yep. jump into it? You know what I'm saying? So it's it's football did teach us that when we come from uh man, Coach Brown had a water hose out there. Our practice field was a stick up, it, it was a, a briar patch basically, <laughs> and it was stickers <laughs> all over the place. We couldn't wait to go out there and lay in them stickers, man. But I remember telling coach my my first day after, I said, coach, it's stickers right here. He said, stickers? Okay, get up. Get up and stack. Go right here. <laughs> so I went, I walked over there. Like I'm thinking, well, coach, he, he looked out for me, put me in a good spot. I barely flops. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> stickers everywhere. <laughs> like he put me in most of <laughs> But like you said, you got to be, you thinking like, but I want to play football. So the part of me that's saying, ouch, and it's stickers out here. He like, now nah, you got to get up because Edgar, my older cousin, we got another cousin that's, he's basically the cat you were in high school, except he was probably running around 6'2", 245 in high school with Mike Linebacker. And he, was, he was like, oh, yeah, he was everything. <laughs> so, But as yeah. a freshman, I'm a year ahead in school, so I was a 16-year-old senior. So I was, with 12 as a freshman? Edgar, my older cousin. <laughs> All the other big dudes, like, you want to play football? Oh, that, that was your cousin. All right, Edgar Quint, come over here. Anderson, get up there. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to drive me through the stickers. And guess what? If I lay yeah. down, he's going to blow it again, and they're going to hit me again while I'm on the ground. That's life. Life ain't going to stop coming just because you want to lay down there. Mm -hmm. So you got to. Yeah. That me versus me stuff got to be happening like this. It's got it's to be firing on the fly, like a split second. And uh, you just got to get back in there, man. Uh, Edgar, hey, uh, back to you. <laughs> yeah, hey, DJ. Now let's let's because you said something a while back ago about pressure in the lead. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of times people don't get a chance to really hear this. You know, I've when I get with me at times I talk about the pressure that I had playing um, in the league. But let's talk about that, man. You you know you leave Texas. Um, First round draft pick, 15 overall. What that that pressure, man? I mean, 14 years in, like that pressure, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, you know what? I uh before I get into that, I, I enjoy not having that pressure anymore. I honestly do, man. I mean, oh, man. now now it's different, it's transferred, you know, like we talk about life. Yeah. We all got pressure with the kids, wife, and just we things happen still. Yeah, uh, and we still, we still, we're still handling adversity as we go through life. Uh, but the league, man, 
Man, that pressure, man. Man, I'm telling you, you, you talk about uh, eyes always on you. I mean, from practice field to the meeting room, to the game, to the off season. I mean, every, not just, you know, coach watching, everybody's watching you. And, and, the, and the pressure comes in at, uh, and you try not to think about it. You never know what they're saying upstairs, with the, you know, with the owner and the GM. And you just, you don't know. Like, you know, you're getting replaced, traded. Uh, you know, somebody coming in, drafting, take your spot, all that stuff, man. And uh, you got you got to manage it. You got to manage it, which is hard at times. But um, uh, I handle it, man. I handle it while the time I was there. Now I think about it, I'm like, man, that was that was a lot. Um, being a first round pick, um, um, my first four years, uh, I, I did well. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't a bust. I, 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 but I, I was a I was one of them yo-yo players where you say. Man, oh man, look at this. He got he he that, that like a Pro Bowl player right here. He just he, he's everywhere. And then some games you're like, man, did did he even play? Just because he just you know he wasn't into it or whatever. And uh, it's it's when I got benched my fifth year, uh, Todd Haiti came in, whole new regime came in and benched me uh, for whatever reason. He was he he a different kind of cat. So he ain't yeah 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 yeah. But it happened, you know. It's one of those things where something wasn't supposed to happen, but it happened. Uh, uh, and and the whole year I got benched. I only, only played back in the day. I only played um, my fifth year in the league. I played nickel. And when you play nickel back in the day, it's it's. I mean, you're twenty percent of the time. Right now, nickel is your base defense. That's your base That's defense. Just, yeah, but but at that time, I wasn't playing much. And man. I, that taught me so much. That was like a, a year that kind of helped me to grow mentally, spiritually. Like it really, you know, that, that's what we're talking about. You learn more from your losses than your wins. And I'll tell you what, man, after that season, um, they, they made this whole big deal. Oh, it's going to be an open competition now. You know, they all asked about, hey, why, why is DJ not on the field? You know, he got tired of that stuff. Man, I'll tell you what, man, man, I, in 2000, and I still remember this day, 2010, training camp, man. I made sure I beat out that other player every single day in training camp. I'm talking about I woke up, and I and I don't care if he had a great day. I beat him every single day, and that and that wasn't watching him. That was worried about worried about me, like making sure I I handle my business. I tell you what, man. Every time we watch film in training camp. I was kicking somebody ass. I really was, man. I really yeah. was. And 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 setting that foundation then, it it let me know because eight games during that year, I they paid me, paid me a big deal. Th- five, five years, 35 million that quick. But that lets you know at that that point in time, I created a habit of consistency, mm-hmm. consistency and being easily motivated. And I tell you what, man, that led my career like from I, I didn't make any Pro Bowls until after I got benched. That's yeah. that just lets you know, like uh, um, that sometimes the adversity is is there to push you to another level. And and that that and regardless of if I uh, if it wasn't supposed to happen or, or happen, it happened, and uh, I made the best out of it, man. So I mean, and don't get me wrong, once you get that money. Um, um, it's not like oh you you go kick back because they they really down they they're saying yeah. all right if you ain't you ain't balling like you're supposed to be you 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 out like so yeah. that's that's another pressure. That's another pressure. Now you got the bag, and mm-hmm. it's time to perform. Mm-hmm. What you gonna do? You know, yep. and 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 to me like I you, know, you sit back and you think about that right like now you've gotten paid. A lot of times cats will go and get relaxed and chill. I'm like oh man I made it, but now it's like. And to me, I think that's the difference between goals and growth. If I mm. hit a goal, right? I've always heard per- people say, man, I've hit my goals. I, I, I got I got the deal now, bro. Well, I don't know what else I want to do. Well, if I say I'm trying to continue to grow, man, you what I'm hearing, big. like there, there's always room. You can't, you ain't never heard nobody say, man, I'm tired of growing. Mm. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Yeah. like growth is it's it's uh it's infinity, right? Like it's everlasting, it can continue to grow. So I like that, bro. I like that. Well, appreciate you, bro. Appreciate. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna steal that. It's, yeah, yeah. It's Don't growth. Get me wrong. Yeah. It's a it's a goals and it's a growth plan. Two totally different things. But me hearing you say about that adversity that you finally you had ran into, 
that you had ran into and, 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 and how it molded you into honestly. And you, you, you got a decision to make when you hit that adversity. You can, you know, lay over and, oh, man, they don't like me. And they don't care, you know what I'm saying? But it's like you're not giving yourself excuses to continue to grow. And more importantly, what you said is the self-awareness of how I can improve. Mm. You know, we talk about film study. We talk about film study. I mean, Corden was talking about this earlier before we started recording that. Yeah, you learn a lot about formations and, and uh, uh, tendencies offenses have. Uh, or what they do and what they do well and what they struggle at when you watch film. But more important than film is to watch yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. to look at yourself to say, dude, what can I do to become better and what do I need to improve on? So you really went back to the, you went back to the uh, the drawing board, man. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Of, of, of what we gonna focus on with this with this dry race of marker and this whiteboard, DJ, that's what we gonna yep. focus on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Be a better, a better version of myself. That's all you got control of, right? Yep. The grand scheme of things, you only, you only got control. All you really got is your reaction. That's it. Uh, mm. You ain't controlling the formation. You ain't controlling the angle of the lineman taking at you or whatever. You ain't controlling yep. none of that. All you control is what you do on the field, off the field, no matter what. <laughs> that's what you, <laughs> that's what you're in control of at the end of the day. Uh, Egg and I, I talked to Egg about that before. There was a point we wanted to hit, that point you just talked about. That old nine year when Haley comes in, you get benched. <clears throat> the next year, they uh but they put you on your on your first round tender. Like you, like you said, yep. at, at first they they wanted the bird feed you, right? Mm -hmm. And then by game eight, here come the yep. come the big contract. All because again, you didn't control Haley benching you. You, you didn't control you being in the nook and that only being 20% of the snaps back then. All you control was when this next offseason start, <laughs> I'm whooping somebody's ass yeah, every single real. day. You know what I'm yep. saying? I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be. Because that's that's what we talked about. Uh, when we do talk about you, when we do say, man, they don't talk about him enough. Well, I feel like you kind of, you came in at an interesting time, right? Because the Mike linebackers, Ray was probably running around at 265 around that time. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they were more big burly guys it's, it's because people were still running power eyes and stuff at one point yep. where I got to take on a Lorenzo Neal or all start in the hole <laughs> and make a tap. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Here you come, ushering yeah. in this new type, of, the type of linebacker we see today, right? Yeah. One that can get sideline to sideline. He's, he's a runner. 245-ish, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. uh, what Egg and I always talked about is you didn't look like, it didn't look like <laughs> you were supposed to be doing all this, but you was always in the right place. Uh, what I don't want to lose you on is from 09 to until you got injured that year. And then after you got injured, even that next year, from that point on, it's 100 plus tap every year. Mm. From, yeah. from, from so, that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah that no, point. that's that's a good that's a good stat. That just lets you know, like that that's that's the that's the work I was putting in, and 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 the proof is in the pudding, right? Like yeah. like you you went through something, and then you 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 got better from it. That's the big thing. It, we're gonna go through ups and downs in life, but as as Edgar was talking about that goal and growth. Of course, I had goals, but where's what is what, what was my growth plan? And yeah. my growth plan. Look, look pretty damn good, man. Yeah, I you, look you pretty did. damn good. It's like yeah. it's like a trampoline, man. Sometimes you gotta come down. Mm, <laughs> come on, on the trampoline. When you mm -hmm. come down, you know about you. You waiting on your ball over there to hit you with that right bounce. And the next, the next twenty jumps, like it's almost like you're floating. But you had to come down hard though. Had to come down hard at least one time, yeah. and then it springs you back up yeah. every single time. Uh. I'm actually, I'm actually in the process where I'm finished. I already wrote my book. I'm finishing typing it up now. But one of the last chapters in it, one of the parts of the last chapter is there's more work at the top. So mm. basically talking about climbing this ladder to the top and everybody want to get to the top. Again, future don't exist. So we work our way until what we, what we thought about and then we're there and you will think I made it. Let me, let me sit still. Yeah. But it's people, there's other people that's trying to get to the top. Uh, you got other things that me versus me again, 
I like to think about it like the old video games. You got a level boss at the end of every, every level, <laughs> and his yeah. power cell is is bigger than everybody else's. You can't hardly hit him. He know all your moves. Yeah. That's you. So at the top, <laughs> you got him. And what and the biggest thing is comfort. He wants you to get comfortable, like you said. I got my money. <sighs> I can breathe now. Yeah. Let me let me sit back and chill. The moment mm -hmm. you do that, though, Man. you start to because because at the top, really think about a mountain has made. You got more room at the base. Man, come on. It goes up. Yeah. Right, right at the peak. It ain't that much room up there. Nah, it ain't many, ain't many places for you to for you to make a, yeah. a misstep. You, you're gonna slip and fall. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's more worth to stay up there. All the greats, Kobe's, uh LeBron, Brady. I don't even like to say that because I ain't a, I ain't a, <laughs> I've been a Ravens fan my whole life. So Tom Brady that stings <laughs> me sometimes. But Brady, what like Think about it, <laughs> like seven rings. Giselle make more money than me. Like, what is that making me tick to come to practice every day before everybody else and leave after everybody else and work harder than everybody else and get mad when uh, receiver number six is off just a little bit in his rap? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And he throw a whole temper tantrum. That's that's DNA. <laughs> that's, that's greatness and grinding because you, like, you should be comfortable. You ought to be chilling. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah. You, you gotta beat that person. It's more work at the top. So kudos to you again on that. I told you it was a flower. Yeah, I, episode. Hey, I like that yeah. analogy, man. I'm y'all, y'all got y'all, y'all just the same, man. I'm stealing that one too. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, DJ. Yeah. Hey, we two peas in the pot, me and him. Yeah. Sometimes I purposely gotta set a time for him when I talk to him in the morning. Cause if I don't, <laughs> boy, we'll go down a whole rabbit hole of conversation. <laughs> hey man, I, for real though, bro. I I I'll say this. I know we get close to time being up, but um, dude, when I said this at the beginning, top linebackers I played with, you, Bar Scott, and Ray Lewis. And I knew about you before when I was with the Ravens, but when I got in Kansas City and got a chance to be in those meetings with you and watch you on the field, bro, it really even validated to me even more how great of a linebacker you was. And I'm a, and this, and here's the why behind it. Always got to watch to Here's the why behind what am I saying? You didn't have layers of protection always in front of you. You like them solid nose all the time. The yeah, three yeah. to take them tap them guards and them centers up. You know, Baltimore built their defense to protect their linebackers. So that your note as a job, the job of a nose and that three tech was to take two. That if you yeah, don't take two, don't make you, a play. Just don't yeah, make yeah. a play. You take two up. <laughs> so with that being said. Ray could really go play football. Bart was always coming down here looking for some smoke. So that was just, that was just what Bart did. Hell of a linebacker though. But they built that defense to protect their their, their, their the second that those linebackers. In Kansas City, bro, we didn't had it. You didn't had it all the time, bro. Like you just didn't. And like you just didn't. And and part of that can be scheme wise, right? Like the that ain't just always the players. That can be like the D coordinators. You know what I'm saying? Like scheme wise or whatever. There's a lot of other different things that go into that. But I will watch you on film like, man, how the hell did DJ make that play, bro? Like, like, dude, like pure athletic, just not having a system always that protected you and protected those inside linebackers to make their job easy for them. Sometimes, even if you have protection, you still may have to deal with that guard. You yeah. still may have to deal with that, that, that next guy, right? But Dude, salute you, bro. Help man, I appreciate it, man. You know, man, those, talk a lot those... about you, bro. But me being inside watching that, I'm like, hey, bro, this dude right here, a baller. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's that. You know what? That's 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 big praise coming from you because you've been around it, bro, and uh, you've seen it at a high level, the highest level. When you talk about Ray, you talk about Bart and those guys, and, and those. Me, Bart, and Ray, we, we, we totally, totally different guys. I mean, yeah. that's just what it is, especially the scheme when you start talking about that. But, uh, 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 man, I was, I was real um, – I, I had a knack for being slippery. I had a knack yeah. for being slippery. And um, sometimes when you look on film uh, um, and, and, you know, our coach, sometimes other players, especially inside backers, they'll try to do what I do or go behind the black or go behind the back or – dip under and do yeah. all that stuff. And coach like, nah, don't, don't, mm -hmm. don't, don't do that. And they you looking at me like, hey, DJ just, I just saw DJ do that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was one of those things where 
uh, 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 especially when uh, um, uh, Edgar came, man, uh, don't get me wrong, we was a physical group um, uh, at times, but um, I, I finessed a lot of things. Now, I can get physical, I'm a linebacker, yeah. but, um, um, but that was my style 24-7, and and I tell you what, I guess Edgar been around. I mean, being a, being <laughs> being in Baltimore, hey, being in Baltimore, he came in. We thought Edgar was crazy because yeah. Edgar, when the guard pull or any kind of power, usually you know tumble. You got all the guys; they'll hit it sometimes, or sometimes they 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 are they are wrong arm it, get under it. You know, cut cut them half a body. Man, yeah. he didn't. He went to rule them. I mean, he. They come around and we, it was almost like a highlight film doing training camp. We like, hey, look at this. <laughs> boom, boom. You see Edgar just just rocking him. And and you know what? The next, like he he didn't dodge it. He like, he wasn't like, oh, he hit him one time. That was it, guys. No, they do that again and Edgar's there. That guard like, dang, here come, <laughs> here come hard, here come hammerhead, tie out. And you know what? As, as an inside backer, because Edgar talked about it, I kind of, I actually, even though I didn't have that protection all the time because I was a finesse guy at times, uh, I, I enjoy that. That's that makes it a lot easier for me. I'm like, cool. I ain't got to do much. I can <laughs> I can really I can really run and, and use my ability. So when he in there, I'm like, man, crash it. Like I'm I'm giving him high five. Let's go do it again. Yeah, that's yeah. That's why I that's what got you out. Yeah. That's, probably, that's probably what got me about it. Now. Yeah, that's exactly Gil, what got hey, you. Hey, hey, I'll say this. Gil, Gil's game. Gil, Gil's the ET. Gil, Coach Gary Gills, man. Came to me and he's like, hey, nine, nine. Uh, they, they're having conversations about if your ass is crazy or not. He's like, <laughs> he's like hey, I need you to kind of, <laughs> I like it, but I need you to, <laughs> to kind of break it back a little bit. E.T. said that to me too one time I came to the sideline. You know, E.T. had that big dip in his mouth. Yeah, yeah. He spicked that dip out. He was like, you crazy. <laughs> He's like, I'm watching you, boy. <laughs> hey, but man, I don't know, man. That's just, it go back to DJ. It, it go back to what you talked about, man. It's, it's work ethic and everything I I did as, a, as an early stage of my life no. was just go hard at what I've done. Yeah. You know, football field, weight room, sprints. Just going hard, even my job now I do, man. You know, going hard at my, trying to be a better friend, going hard at being a better a father, you know, being a better neighbor, man. Just going hard at my, my relationship with Christ, you know what I'm saying? Now I ain't hit nobody, but like Damn. giving that extra, that <laughs> effort, you know, there's no there's no excuse for effort. It's, it's no excuse, either you give it or you don't. And then sometimes I've been on the flip side where I didn't give the best effort. Yep. And I know what's been on the flip side of me not giving the best effort. It's been yeah, regret. we all have. Yep. It's been regret, right? So now it's like I, I gotta deal with the regret side of it. So now, nah, man, uh nah, dude, that was just you know how I did things, man. And hey, I, I appreciate you, bro. Uh DJ, I know we're getting ready to wrap it up, man. But uh dude, I know you're retired now, man. You know, very hands-on with the with the family. Mm -hmm. Uh what's the next mountain, man? You know what, man? I'm 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 always trying to uh, get better. Uh, being a philanthropist, uh, I got a foundation, uh, yeah. Defend the Dream Foundation, which caters to inner city kids through education. We, we, we you know we go into the inner city schools and um, um, enhance and beautify their libraries. I mean, you know, fat heads and paint everywhere, just kind of livening it up. And the big the big money purchase is uh, age appropriate books that we provide them with. Uh, which is big in inner city because uh, the libraries are that's the engine that's the heart of the school man so mm -hmm. uh, uh man i'm 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 deep into that of course i got some little solid investments here and there but other uh, other than something that's keeping me busy family and wife kids and uh my foundation uh so yeah. it's yeah I'm, I'm i'm living a good life right now man living a good life yeah that's a beautiful thing uh side note it's the interesting uh Trivia tidbit, Edgar's mother is a librarian for what? 20 years, maybe? 20 years. I <laughs> you know, okay. I all the time, bro. Yeah, we we stayed in the library. She she would whisper and cuss us out if we got too, <laughs> yeah, for real. too loud in there. Yeah, <laughs> she really man, would. I, I, met, I met Edgar's mom maybe once uh, mm -hmm. when I came down there. I tell you what, and 
I, I, mean, I was around her maybe for two days, and I and I and I and I love her. You know, what <laughs> I mean, that's that's how that's how much uh, I see uh, my mom and his mom, and just just that parent where you say, "Man, my my my, my mama, she she all in, she all in, yeah. whatever that means. That looks different for everybody else. My mama is all in." Yeah, man, that's that's uh before we get out, that's part of why Elga played like that. Uh, we talked about what's normal to you earlier. Well, that's how we was raised. Uh, that same boys gonna be boys thing. That older cousin I told you about used to rough. He he used to get shoulder pads every Christmas, and so <laughs> he'd hand us down the other shoulder pads. Now he's two years older than Elga, four years older than me. Yeah. <clears throat> so our job was to play football with him when we were younger. So you can, as you can imagine. Yeah. He would just mow us over, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he coming back and he telling you the whole time, you better get up. <laughs> now, Elga, Elga wasn't the most coordinated kid at the time. So he, uh, like Elga didn't like all that early on. You know what I'm saying? We used to pick on him and melt him and he had these big glasses. And, and then uh, uh, his gene pool hit one year <laughs> and all of a sudden they're about six foot. And I remember it vividly. We had a we had a fight in his mama's backyard, right? So we play basketball and we were, I ain't like to lose. So at the point where Edgar started beating me, I wanted to fight. Now usually you fight Edgar, that's it. But yeah. <laughs> this day, you know, he about six foot now and I go to swinging that Edgar, he hold me out, choke me and I can't <laughs> get to him. But we taught not to quit, so I ain't quitting. But his yeah. friend Terrence was in the backyard. <laughs> he ran around and got Uncle Ed. Uncle Ed came back and said, hey, y'all stop that. Now, usually, if it's a good fight, somebody got to actually touch you and break you up. But I was so happy yeah. to hear Uncle come around and come and say, stop. <laughs> so as soon as he said, stop, I gave up. But I knew from that moment on, <laughs> I saw this is a new era. And after that, man, yeah. it's like whatever we did, whether I, whether I beat, him in, beat him in it or not, he's going to go. 110 miles per hour, extra hard. Yeah. And we had to be like that where we grew up at because like that liking word I told you earlier, like the whole school was full of them. So if you didn't yeah. <laughs> if you didn't come in and yeah. be about your business, you would get lost in the fray real quick. So he, that was just a normal thing. Like that's how we played ball in school. That's what he took to Southeast Missouri. That's what he, when he got drafted, when he got picked up by the Ravens undrafted, I was, it was the happiest day of my life, not his, because he wasn't a Ravens fan. Yeah, I was, so. but I knew yeah. he fit. I'm like, that's what he needed to be. Uh, undraft, first of all, he was an undrafted free agent. He was the only player to make the defense, the 53 man roster. To make that love defense that. at that time, like, yeah, love like it. you gotta be, <laughs> like, that says something. So even yeah. if he didn't know it, anytime he'll call me and kind of be down on himself or, or worried about what's coming next, I'm like, hey, man. We from Rayville, Louisiana, population yep. 3,000, right? <laughs> you in the league playing for the Ravens right now, bro. Like, just take that. But I knew it wasn't gonna be enough. I could I could tell him, this is, I'm, I'm about to let you go. I could tell him when we was younger, we'd be at the movie theater. <clears throat> and I'd be like, hey man, you looking kind of slim. <laughs> right there on the spot, he gonna give me at least 20 push-ups. Yeah, like, he just, he yeah. just yeah. His, his mind was just <laughs> wired that way, like he, yeah. We had a friend named Lee. Shout out to Lee Lewis. I said, man, you Edgar Jones or you Lee Lewis? Lee was a skinny guy. And he'd say, what? <laughs> and right on the spot. I don't care if we was clean. He going to give me 20 push-ups. You know what I'm saying? And that just carried him on. That right there, that hard work, made him meet you, right? It's, it's all a part of the, again, the future don't exist. But his right now was, I'm going to attack it right now. I'm going to attack it right now. That led him to meeting you. Nothing happens by chance that led us all the way to this podcast to talking to the great, the great Derek Johnson, Hall of Fame. I'm gonna I'm say that uh, yeah, for, for Ken, but you already a Hall of Fame in Texas. Uh, but but like I'm in Canton, Ohio right now. That's why I live right now. Man, I'm, I'm sure time. you'll be you'll be up the street at the <laughs> at that one yes, sooner or later, man. If they just look at the numbers, uh, you basically you take out the three years when you were hurt when you got benched. And your last year, you basically averaged 116 tackles a game. For the, even if you Man. add those in, you averaged 90 a game for a whole career, for a 13-year career. Yeah. That's, 
Let's get it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's so, what's up. That's what's up. That's, yeah, what, that's so. a good stat right there. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a great stat. A great one. Call it what it is, man. Don't be, you ain't got to be humble yeah, now. Appreciate that. So, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we, that's what's up, man. We appreciate you, man. For real, I appreciate you for coming on. Uh, kudos to you on how you got going with your family and the foundation. Uh, kudos to you on being a great father, man. And I know, because I know this fellow up here, just the fact that he surrounded himself with you lets me know what type of guy you are anyway. Like football, sure. stats and all that aside, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's other guys <laughs> that, that I met through him that I know that ain't ain't made one tackle in their life. I just know yeah. what type of cats he attaches himself to. So nice to meet you. Kudos to you. Thank you. I appreciate uh, it, Courtney. Yep, yep. Hey, DJ, appreciate you, bro. He yes, took sir. all yes, the words sir. out. So, uh, yeah, so <laughs> nah, I enjoy it, on, man. Bro. So y'all, it's just like talking two eggers on, on, on here, bro. This uh, yeah. Up. yeah. Yeah, he, no, nah, he on a whole different level for me. <laughs> I kill it. But uh, no, I appreciate you, man. Go ahead and enjoy your day, bro, with that family. And appreciate you again for coming on. Yes, sir. It's been the lit cold, man. We out. Yes, sir. All right.